Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another of our global veteran stories. Today, we actually have two beautiful global veterans' wives here to share with us. You're right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guests are Nicole Gebhardt and Tom, I'm not your top Tam, <laughs> Jen certainly. <laughs> We've interviewed Tom and Tom and Jen uh, together. Um, we'd love to celebrate our soldiers, you know, the, the sacrifice that they've made and the the price that they pay when they come home. But, you know, very often we forget about the wives. And we did a, a, a show, Jen, on what wonderful foundation you're doing, um, you know, with your husband and on your own. And Nicole, you are a huge um, advocate for for that support as well. And I just thought it was a no brainer putting you two wonderful ladies together and kind of sharing the ups, the downs, the how to navigate it, how to get through, but how to keep the joy in your life. And that's the important thing, isn't it? Joy, because joy can conquer anything. And but how do you keep it? You know, when you're worried when they get deployed or when you um, or when you just have to battle with the post-traumatic stress, you know, that comes back with them, because I don't think I've met a veteran yet that hasn't had some form of that. So it's all about that navigating today. Now I've interviewed Nicole before and I invite you to come back and please listen to her show individually. I've interviewed Jen on her own and along with her husband. So much wonderful information to do here. Um, and But today it's about that celebration of veterans' wives. Don't forget them. There are heroes or heroines as, as well, right? Welcome to the show, Nicole and Jen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, Thank you. Grateful yeah. to be here. Um, people don't realize, you know, that when um, husbands get deployed, and you know, I know Jen that you were on the front there as a photographer there for a while, so you kind of you were up there in, in the front where you actually understood what was going on. But you know, uh, our show with your husband was very much about coming back with the the soldier mentality and kind of running home as a boot camp, you know, and the post-traumatic stress, the triggers and everything else and how it affect the relationship and what you had to do to change. And, you know, Nicole, you know, you're very much a, a mist in that as well. People don't realize, you know, what your husband's come home with um, and what you then have to navigate with this person that may be very different to the person that went away but they also forget about what you're going through while you're at home mm -hmm. and while you're waiting for them to come home or, or um, the whole stress factor, moving around like so much you have done, Nicole, constantly moving around. Uh, there's so much to juggle and navigate. You've got to do it with the stiff upper lip. And it takes its toll, doesn't it? So I'm going to go around the board. Uh, Nicole, share a little bit about, you know, your struggles with it right now. Okay, so... Um... Being a military spouse is tough. It's yeah. it's tough. You know, I talk a lot about how I remember um, after my I, my first divorce because of abuse in the marriage. I said, if I ever marry again, it will be no one in the military because I can't do it. <laughs> they needed to live in Destin, Florida, where I was at the time. He was in Savannah with the 165th Airlift Wing, and I had two toddlers, and I was pregnant, seven months pregnant. My sister was like, "We're going to make you an account on Match.com," but I was like, "Okay, whatever." <laughs> oh yes, I saw his picture. He's got three children. He lives in Savannah, and he's been in the military for 24 years but that just says when you know you know yes and so immediately you just you know life started and I, I will say when his first big deployment when they were all babies one two three and we had all the other kids at that point too one two three four five you know all these little babies I said what did I do I mean <laughs> what did I get myself into I all these kids running around in diapers <laughs> and it was tough but I will say you know when he returned that was maybe more tough because I didn't know what to expect. It had been so long. I remember waiting for him at his homecoming with all the kids. And it was like, uh, I'm kind of nervous. Like we've kind of <laughs> done our own thing for this long period of time. Yes. 
But I will tell you, once you kind of get in sync with each other again, it's the most beautiful thing. Our marriage was stronger, continues to get stronger when he deploys, when he PCSs and travels a lot, because you learn to appreciate everything about each other. You know, it yeah. just makes it so much more special. Yeah. Yeah. It's going through the trials and tribulations and finding the strength, the courage and the camaraderie yeah. between it all. Right. You know, we don't realize how strong we are. Jen, mm -hmm. share your story. Well, I'm a veteran spouse, so I met Tom. Um, he was retired three years at the time. However, he had spent the first two years of his retirement in Jordan. So basically, about eight <laughs> months. Retirement? <laughs> yeah. Because he was still doing what he was doing in the military, just mm -hmm. as a contractor at that time. So when I met him, um, I had spent my entire adult career, I was 38 years old, working in the arts, working in communication arts. So I started working and embedding with special operation troops, stateside so i never deployed with them but i would go on these very very big realistic military training exercises spending anywhere from a week to four or five weeks with a troop a specific unit and during that time i really um started to hear the stories of the struggles back at home uh, i think a lot of people thought i was hearing a lot of combat stories i think i heard about four you know it was really about um the issues at home and so from being a contractor in special operations to hey, we need, to, we need to do something about this. We need to talk about what's happening on the home front um, in order to help reduce the suicide rate, which, yes. you know, is 22 to 28 a day now. Yeah, way too many. Uh, I believe that the suicide rate is higher than the actual loss uh, oh. in combat. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, you know. we, we talk about that a lot. So in Iraq and Afghanistan, it's about... Um, 5,569 killed from 9-11 to 2019. And the amount of suicides from 2006 to 18 is 45,000. Wow. So our enemies right. overseas aren't touching our soldiers um, the way that our soldiers are. And so Tom asks all the time, when you look at that number, who's the greatest enemy to the American mm -hmm. soldier? Truly. Yeah. You know, we need to have those conversations and those dialogues and, and get real honest about um, how to battle that. Yeah, I, I've done quite a number of shows with uh, with veterans and people say, sorry, you're anti-war. Why do you do it? And it's like um, I celebrate who they are now because of it, the struggle more to do with the post-traumatic stress and where it's led them. And what I have found amongst the veterans, they realize that, that society and organizations, you know, government ones, aren't really there to support them, that it ends up being veterans who understand forming foundations and supporting each other because they understand what they need. And so, okay, government, if that's the case, why are you not supporting the organizations that are doing the work? Because they're least speaking the same language. And 45,000 deaths is, is criminal and most of the time that is because we leave them behind you know they come back oh you know thank you for your service you're a hero uh but go and be normal now how can they be normal now after what they faced nicole you know there's no such thing as normal there's you know mm. we're all just different people but it's just they change but in all honesty i know we're talking about deployments something that's harder for our family is we pcs every 18 months so yeah. every 18 months we're completely starting over new friends you know new schools new doctors new and i think people forget that as the spouse we set it all up we find the house we find the yeah. church we find the schools yeah. we're doing yeah. all that and we have to just pick up and go we're told this is where you're going to go and this is when you're going to go you know and this is when you're going to do it and I think people don't realize it's so hard as a military spouse to ask for help. Yes. We're just ingrained in our heads. We do the deployments. We do the travel. We do the moving. All of it, you know. And it's just a, um, it's tough. It's a tough life to live. But I will say it makes you so strong and it makes you realize it's okay to ask for help. Yes. People want to help you. People are out there to, to help you. They want to help with your kids. They want to help you, you know, at each time you move. And that is the beauty about military spouses, though, because everywhere we move, it's guaranteed I will have friends because they're spouses. There's the spouse pages on Facebook, you know, all this. You're already have these amazing soul sisters that know exactly what you're mm -hmm. going through and are there for you. So it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing. And I've chosen to look at it as a beautiful 
a beautiful blessing instead of something negative. Yeah. Every time we move, we have, you know, a new, a new town, new food, new cultures, new people. You know, you have to really look at it in a joyful sense instead of, oh, here we go again, you yeah. know. Look at it as an adventure. In, as as Correct. exploring Correct. rather than yeah. deploying. <laughs> yeah. My kids have been all over. We have friends all over the world. Yeah. And it's such a blessing to be able to show them, look at all this. Look yes. at what we get to do because we're in the military. Yeah. How high is the divorce rate amongst uh, you know, veterans and their wives when they come home? And because again, a lot of veterans I've I've interviewed, we came home and they divorced because you know, the wife remembered him when he went mm -hmm. and when he came back, he wasn't the same person. There wasn't the, the uh, support in helping the family kind of navigate who they are now. There wasn't the support from, um, you know, the, the soldier, the husband of what the wife has been going through, you know, keeping optimistic every day, you know, in the back of the head, always waiting for that telegram, so to speak. You know, th there's a lot of divorce rate there. Does anybody know the statistics there? I don't know the statistic to you, Jen. I, you know, I've, it's a little bit hard to get to you. And in fact, uh, we're working with military special operation um, research group called MSOF. And so we literally just had a board meeting, a discussion about mm -hmm. this and they're researchers. This is what they do. And they said, we can't find numbers and we statistically can't say, and they won't say because the information's too hard to gather. Mm -hmm. um, but what they did say is it's least twice the civilian population. So it's at wow. least double. Um, but it could be higher. And they said, again, it depends on the unit, how many mm. times you deployed, you mm. know, your op tempo, all of these things. They said the factors are just too great to make a general statement. So right. that was the education it, I got this week. <laughs> well, think about your spouse is gone, you're home. You have to just kind of start from scratch. I mean, you just, you have to make, you know, people don't realize when they come home, you've been living a certain life from either six months, 12 months to two years mm -hmm. on your own. And we all talk about, we grow, we grow as individuals. And if you're, it's hard to yes. pull it back together, you know, cause you could grow this way if you're just, if you're not careful with that. Yeah. That's what your organization is about, isn't it, Jen? You know, um, the one with your husband, Tom, it, uh, you know, you started this, this foundation of bringing couples back together and getting to know who they are now. You know, the love is still there. It's the wonderful amber, but it needs to be stoked because you, you can't help but be two different people. You've been on two different battlefronts. So tell us a wee bit about that, Jen. So, you know, um, my experience is always secondhand when it comes to being, you know, working with military spouses. Like I said, I'm a veteran spouse. And so, um, you know, the stories that I've really heard is about that, that separate growth. And in fact, I even had a spouse call and say, well, I became a realtor and we were talking about it. And she said, my husband didn't know until he got home. And I'm like <gasps> thinking about it, like, oh my gosh, you had to decide to be a realtor, go through the process and then become a realtor he comes home and she's like hey i've been doing this i think that's probably pretty rare today mm -hmm. but you know my husband was a 90s veteran so 90s 2000s and back then he's like we didn't call home there wasn't skype yeah. there wasn't anything yeah. like that i left for four months and i saw my wife after four months mm. I, I don't know how much it's changed now i know a specific group was overseas doing a lot of FaceTiming. I know that just got cut off because of security reasons. So I don't know how that's going to impact the families. Big. Um, it's going to impact I, them bigly. And it doesn't, you know, I have a lot of friends whose husbands are very, very successful CEOs or they're in sales and marketing and they travel all the time. So it's not specific to military families. It's mm -hmm. any couple who is dedicated, you know, one spouse is extremely dedicated to their job maybe has to travel a lot, has gone a lot. You could, like Nicole yeah. said, grow this way. Um, so it's really important. And, and what we do at our foundation is how do you reconnect? In what yeah. way do you reconnect? And to stoke that fire, because probably nine times out of 10, when I get a call, it's never, I want to divorce him or her. It's, I don't know how to find my way back. Right. Not, I'm done. I just don't yeah. know how to find my way back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would imagine that is a big one because, uh, you know, let's face it, you know, life is, is that wonderful journey of, of self-discovery, of, you know, evolving and, and growing and, and uh, becoming something else. And as you said, Nicole, when you're at home and you're so sustainable, you have to be, you have to be sustainable. You've got to keep the home front going. Um, you haven't got time to worry about what's going 
on with him and vice versa. And when you do come back, you've both had two extreme different, um, you know, experiences. And if you haven't got that channel where you can kind of talk about them, and we know that most vets don't talk about what goes on over there, right? It's shut down and still keeping up the toughness. And it's like, no, break that facade down. You, you don't need it on the home front. It takes them a while to do that. At the same time, they're used to being in charge. And they forget, well, you've been in charge for the last X amount of period. This is my turf mate. <laughs> you know? So often, uh, we talked about with, with, with Tom and Jen with the, with the thing is that there is that conflict. Don't come back with your rules and regulations into a system that's already working okay, mate. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you, you have a new day. You take out the garbage. <laughs> how you do it, where you go, you know, what, what night the kids are eating, my kids at some point were eating cereal every single night. I was so, just eat whatever you want. I don't care. Here, here's Cereals. Here, here, here. You think about that too. Think about, I know we're talking about the husband and the wife and the spouses. Think about the children. Yes. You know, there are a lot, I have a lot of friends that are pregnant and have to give birth without them there. There's yes. so many, the children get so separated from their daddy. And mm. it, it is hard as a spell to think about that because you're just so exhausted keeping the children alive, you know, every single moment of every day. And you don't think about how hard it is on the daddy to be not with the children, you know, and that they, they grow too. They're missing first steps, first words, yeah. all of these first, all these different things. Yeah. So that's the children is a huge part of it too. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as you said, cutting off, you know, the ways of being able to communicate with daddy. Mm -hmm. And then daddy's also got to be cryptic because there's not a lot that they're allowed to say. Right. So like kids don't understand that. And, you know, kids ramble on and dad's only got a certain amount of time, you know, and it's yeah, it's it's a constantly ball up in the air, you know, of which which one is the important one to catch. Right. right? So it's a constant navigation. It takes its toll. Uh, and this is why you say you need a sisterhood, mm -hmm. right? You have to have that because A, they know what you're going through, mm -hmm. right? And they know how to help you. But sometimes it's just simply being there for you. Okay, can I cook a meal? They don't need cereal again tonight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> would you just like to have a wine night? You know, a glass of wine and a wine, wine, wine. You know, you need that sometimes, right? And it, it, that as just as much as the, the soldier relies on each other to stay alive out there, you guys have to rely on each other in order to function and stay alive back home. It's a tough life. I, I think you know about my story about being an alcoholic forever. Mm -hmm. And I've been, as of this Monday, 17 months sober. Wow, um, that was the biggest time. Thank you. The biggest ones I would drink the most because I was so, it was so hard. You're doing it all on your own. Yeah. You can't call the husband and say like, you're not going to believe what happened in school today. Or you're not going to believe what he, yeah. she hit him. And da, da, da. It's like, oh my gosh. And it's tough. There are a lot of military, sp military spouses that drink because we just, we don't know what else to do. We're yeah. not getting the help that we need. And yes, you can ask, you know, the spouses, but it's still, it's your life, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's tough. It's mm -hmm. really tough. Yeah. Jen, what have, what have you felt from that? You know, kind of when, you know, Tom has been home, so he, he was away, but it's not quite the same, but you're, you're hearing the other stories there, but what have you found? Because I know that you and Tom, you know, he'd been married before and, you know, it was, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, you got it right this time, you know, and, and, and he, by his own admittance, you know, yes. he realized that so much that he had to undo yes. uh, in order yes. to be able to have a relationship that was was equal and on par. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I mean, it was Delta Force or wife number one. He picked Delta Force. Delta Force or wife number two. He picked. Well, actually, she had an affair and left him. So <laughs> right. that one, number two was like a, he was deployed came back. I think they were married about six months. So he, mm -hmm. he's like, wait, I forget about number two. I'm like, it's okay. But, um, you know, number three, he was with for 16 years, you know, mm -hmm. they had a son together. And so, um, when Tom and I came together, he was still contracting. So, you know, he had a 17 year old son who I barely knew who he barely knew mm -hmm. and in a brand new town say here, here's your stepmom, two kids. Um, I'm leaving for six weeks in four days, you know, right. so, um, I did not have to deal with deployments, but he would still be gone for weeks yeah, or months yeah. at a time in a new situation with, you know, a 17 year old who was really struggling with his own emotional right. health. And 17 um, is an awful, you know, oh the teenage God. years, a head spinning around like the oh, exorcist. No. I mean, it's an awful time. <laughs> Hard enough as it is. Yeah. And he was 
St. Louis, your stepmom and two kids, and you've been an only child your whole life. Yeah. Well, you know, and so um, he and I actually became very close because um, I felt for him. I yeah. totally felt for him. And, you know, he told me one day, he said, I said, do you know what your dad did? And he didn't really care. You know, he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, you know, whatever. I'm like, well, he's kind of a big war hero and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And he's like, I would have preferred for him to work at Home Depot. Yes. Right? You know, he's like, I would have rather had him home every day. I would have rather grown up with my dad, you know, and, and so, yeah, the, 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 the children grow up with hurt or resentment or confusion. We see it all the time. Um, I know when, when he was contracting, I myself too was like, I'm going to, it's four o'clock somewhere became three o'clock somewhere because you don't know how to cope. And at that time I didn't have a sisterhood at all. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I felt like I don't belong in this world. I can't hit up military spouses. Like they're going to look at me like, what have you been through? And you've never been through a deployment and you don't know. So I, I, and that wouldn't have been true. I'm friends with a ton of military wives now. Um, But that's the story I told myself is I don't belong. um, So where do I belong and who do I belong with? And who do I call and say, where's the guidebook Mm. to living this life? Because this is sometimes frankly crazy you know right. sometimes i feel like i'm going crazy yeah. yes yeah and, and there's really not a guidebook if you think about it, and you want one so bad though you're like just anything just teach me but like with my husband every time we move i don't know how long he's going to be gone like i don't know where he's going to go he's always had these positions like when we were at the pentagon and now we're at first air force here at Tyndall air force base in florida i never know like once i'll find out maybe two days ahead of time hey i'm out i gotta go what really but it's just the life we live and you just have to get used to it and it's really tough but you know that's those are the moments where you just be grateful you are in love with somebody you know we've both been previously married too and you just take those moments it's like we've done it before and we can do it again i've just thought that quite honestly um a book needs to be written of uh, you know the the military spouses from two different stories but the handy book each person <laughs> sharing their chapter of survive, you know, what this is what I did to survive. This is what you shouldn't do. Three o'clock, right? <laughs> Downing the wine. Um, how to reach out to each other, what questions to ask each other, how to ask for the support. Because I think a great deal of the time, whether it's in, in the military world or not, as women, we can do it all, right? You know, we're multitaskers. We can do it. And it's a sign of weakness to ask for help. Mm-hmm. But which it isn't because if you again look back at the village every single person in that village supported each other because it was the strength of the village right right you guys have got a global village there and it, and it's being there for each other but it's also not just you guys it's the rest of the world understanding what you're going through mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we're gonna have to put a book together there you know <laughs> <laughs> right so that's on note <laughs> It's hard for everyone to ask for help, it's women. It's hard for us, not yes. even if you're military, if you're not military, it's just hard to ask for help. But, you know, during COVID last year, my husband was the front line. We're Air National Guard. So he was, you know, 24 7 not home. And I was getting jealous of people. I'm so sick of my husband. I'm so, I'm like, I wish I could see my husband. Yeah. You know? But I finally got to the point, I was like, we need toilet paper, we need this. And lo and behold, it showed up on our doorstep. And it was women bringing meals. They knew that my husband was gone all the time. And, you know, I hear you're talking, Janet, but we are the most non-judgmental pe- people. We let everybody in because we want to help. Yeah. We want to help, you know? It's just, it really is a beauty once you reach out and see, okay, I have this tribe of women that are here for me, that, that know exactly what I'm going for, through and exactly how to help me. I think you you women are a special breed and I think that going into this world you have to be of a certain mentality in order to live in this world and survive in this world. If you're needing constantly needing attention mm mm he may look sexy in his uniform, but darling, it's a lot more than that, right? You he know, does, he does. <laughs> yeah. that's why they make them look so sexy in the yeah. uniforms, right? Okay, yeah. yeah, but so many camp people buy into that idea of sexy, you know, the worry, the soldier, the abs, or this, or that. And the next thing you know, he's gone, you're alone, and you think, am I not cut out for this? So you really know to know yourself. I mean, as you said, my list, no military man. <laughs> what do you do? First thing you do is meet the military man, right? So there's obviously something within you that's cut out to do this. And Jen, you just walked into it, you know, blindly, kind of got dumped into the middle of it. 
and you know did you think your life was going to go in this way you know not just with him but with the work that you're doing but yeah. I, feel, I really do think that we you know as we need to look at you women is that you're a different breed mm-hmm. you know uh, because it, it the strength the tenacity the uh the ability to change and uh, adapt but also that camaraderie and compassion that you need not only for yourself but for others that's the ball that keeps you guys alive. I agree. I think I've met some of the most remarkable women in my life who are military or, or veteran spouses. Truly some of the most amazing stories that will never be heard, that will never be told of bravery and vulnerability and courage. Um, and, you know, in part, that's why I started a group called Virago, which means uh, female warrior, so mm-hmm. that we can get those stories out, so yeah. that people can share them and feel connected. And, um, you know, it's funny. We, I get so many messages from, from women saying, I'm watching. I'm not participating, you know, but I'm watching. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that stigma is still there. Yes. Of it's hard to ask for help. It's hard to raise your hand. Sometimes it's hard to even participate. But I think it's critical that people like Nicole and, and other spouses are sharing their journeys and stories because that's what connects us. That's what yes. empowers us and inspires us. So, you know, I learn every single day of my life, every single day from warrior spouses, for sure. And yeah, the thing is, we don't want people to feel they're alone. You know, it's the reason why I do these shows, the reason why I wanted the two of you on together. You've each shared your individual story. You shared your story with your husband. But this, this camaraderie. You know, that's that you never, you've never met, but you have that thread of story that's the same, oh, that's right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, that, that is the thing is that when other people share their story and you go, oh, okay, they, they've got the same thing. Oh, on the surface of things, they look like this and they look like that. But when they open up, I really, they're struggling just as much as I am. And it's okay for me to be vulnerable. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest things. You're, you're, you're military wife. You, you should be strong. Forget about vulnerability. No, you're allowed to be vulnerable. <laughs> well, and it totally gave me chills when Jen just said you hear all these stories about the husband, the spouse, the, you know, the soldier, the airman. But that, why are we not sharing stories about you? Would, it would blow your mind the kind of stuff we have to learn where, our men, where the husbands are gone. Yeah. You don't have to learn how to run a house if you've got a broken dishwasher, if you have to need a replacement. And I'm telling you, everything that could go wrong while your husband's deployed oh, yeah. will go wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Will die. You need when he's home, home, it doesn't go wrong, right? Yeah, Only right? when he's <laughs> away. Yeah. But as soon as he leaves, you're like, I get, our house is falling apart. What? <laughs> People would love to hear those stories. I love hearing stories about these women that conquered this and did this while their husband was, was away. It's just, it's just a beautiful thing. I wish more spouses would share them because I'll go have a coffee with a fellow spouse. This, I laugh the entire time. Here, it's funny afterwards. During yes. This, <laughs> afterwards, you're like, you did what? I <laughs> never do that. You yeah. don't have choice. You don't yeah. have choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go back to the children a moment. It's hard enough being a child today, and I've got this Forgotten Children series going out. Um, so many, you know, the, the counseling, all the counseling I've done through life and, and the 2000 shows I've done, there's a common denominator. And, and it is, it's a forgotten child within us. And a lot of people, their insecurity or their fear or the, the feeling of neglect or the abuse that they've been through, it, you know, comes from that inner child. And if we invest in our children today, we're not going to end up with such a dysfunctional society later. And, you know, military children, the fact that they have to get up and go, the fact they have to sacrifice dad being away, you know, mom's having to wear all the hats and she gets frustrated and they've got to understand that. But, you know, they they have needs too. you know, when is it a good time to speak to mom because mom's juggling all these balls up in the air right now. You know, there, there needs to be not only in the school system, but in the society system of understanding what these kids are going through because it's not, quote, a normal life. Yeah, if you think about that, you know, we talk about when we move every, how often we move mm-hmm. every eight months. I do, I talk about the built-in support I have with fellow wives. 
children don't have that. No. They don't have that. No. So they you know, make friends and it's uprooted and there they go off to the next. Yes, yeah. And that is so tough. You know, this last, this one was one of our hardest ones. My children are getting older and they just cried leaving all their friends. They just yeah. cried. Mm-hmm. And then we got to this new place and they have to start over. And it's interesting because people will ask spouses too, are you military? Are you military? Some of them. And when you say yes, we'll just throw, immediately throw up their protection. They don't want to get to know you because they know you're going to move. Yeah. So it's both ways. It's so tough on my children. You know, when my husband leaves, I don't hundred percent know when he's going to return and so just the other day my my youngest was like please tell me bye before you leave daddy at 5 a.m they don't you know they want to be able yeah. to tell daddy goodbye yeah. they don't you never know 100 percent when they're mm. going to return it's, yeah. it's tough on them it's really tough mm-hmm. um you know you have your own two children uh, jen that you've brought into this life you know so you know never mind you know the the son you you have adopted there who was going through his own trouble now you've got these other two kids and go what the hell mom what have you brought me into you know how have they adjusted into this because you know if you're born into it it's a way of life if you're coming into it, it it's the twilight zone yeah and you know i think it probably would have been a much different situation if tom was active you know mm-hmm. and we were moving and things like that their life um obviously was disrupted by the divorce of course Um, the good thing is my ex and I are still good friends. We talk every day. And so, you know, we really were just joking about, um, getting together. My son's 17 next week and all of us getting together for dinner. So I'm, I'm grateful that we've been able to maintain a relationship. And certainly that was very difficult for my children to go through. So on top of that, we're adding a new stepdad and, um, a stepbrother. So there were certainly challenges blending for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Tom's PTS, you know, he's very protective of my children Mm -hmm. and um, very much wanted to win their affection and kind of have that second chance, I guess. He feels like he really missed out with his son. So a lot of the, you know, a lot of the stressors, he tries to pack it away. You know, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of um, times he he'll isolate and we have to have a lot of discussions with the kids on you know, especially when they were little, like, it's not you, right? Yes, yes. always internalizes, like, he's not mm-hmm. hanging out in his room all the time because he doesn't like you guys. We had to have a lot of those conversations where he's feeling really stressed or he's feeling really tired. Both of my kids did their big eighth grade studies on PTSD mm. and their TED Talks on them because it is in our house and it is in our life. Um, and we have to address it weekly, but they really are resilient kids. They're very... Um, empathetic by nature as well so yeah we've had we had some bumps in the road certainly especially the initial blend we've been together six years this may so i we finally locked into that like Mm -hmm. we are one unit um versus still trying to figure out blending yeah i want to talk about post-traumatic stress for a moment here because i recently watched the harry and megan interview with oprah and I couldn't go to sleep. I had to get up. I had to get up and write an article because you know, um, I've done a couple of shows on them. I, I commend them from walking away from something that just just completely devoured them and where they lost themselves, uh, but also you know felt threatened. And uh, they walked away. You know, especially Harry walking away from a life all that he knew. But the way the media treated Megan, his wife, was a complete trigger of what happened to his mother. And with them being vulnerable enough to be honest and basically admitting, you know, he has that post-traumatic stress, you know, it is there. And then of course, the way the media goes to attack him afterwards, you know, it just sickens me. It completely sickens me. We're inclined to look at post-traumatic stress as a weakness and it isn't, it's a scarring. If somebody came back with a limb gone, right, and they've lost it in battle, if they've lost it to a trauma, we'd be so much more sympathetic. But people are coming back with a scarring on the heart and the soul and their psyche. And it's like, well, suck it up, man. You know, like, get over yourself and do a little therapy and you'll be all right. It is. It's there forever. It may get lowered but it just needs a trigger to come back up again. And people don't realize it's not just a, oh, you have therapy, he's okay now and never have it again. It's always there, just at a different degree. And it's like, you guys, um, especially you, Nicole, with the six kids, you've got your own post-traumatic stress. 
right. with the move, with the looking after the children, with the, you know the, uh, the unsureness. Is he coming home? We've got to stop looking at this as, as just a nice little le label that we put on people, that it's people with mental problems or people that are weak and understand it's a pandemic on its own. Yeah, I'm glad we're talking about that because I think a lot of people say also that it's it's just the, the one that deployed. It's just the one yeah. that deployed. Well, I was first diagnosed with it. My I lost my first son when he was nine weeks old. I walked in on him and he was lifeless in his crib. Mm -hmm. And I, a few years later, I was diagnosed with PTSD. But then, you know, the deployments were so hard. There was one phone call. I was a key spouse and I had the, the spouses would call me if they needed something and I would get them help, organize meal trains, whatever it was. And I got a phone call from one of the... Um, from one of the commanders saying, hey, a C-130 went down where my husband was deployed. I didn't know exactly, but I had a, an idea. And you're probably gonna get a lot of phone calls and you were trying to figure out what's going on, if it's your husband or not. Can you imagine mm -hmm. like, what, what? I'm gonna have all these people calling me and I don't know what to say. Is it his C-130? Is it not? Is it, the, mm -hmm. is it their troop? Is it not? And you know, that stuck with me for a long yeah. time. And I was diagnosed with having PTSD from a deployment because I thought my husband was dead. I thought he yeah. was killed. You well, know? it triggered everything else that you've yeah. gone through, right? Yeah, that's right. what it does. It's just one thing and then it just, the yeah. ball keeps rolling. So I want to make that very clear. A lot of us spouses, we suffer from PTSD as well. Yes, yes, and it, and it no less yeah. dysfunctional, you know, in your life as, as, as theirs. Um, and, and it's, this is something that we, you know, most of the phone must have to have is compassion. Right, Jen? Oh, yeah, compassion. You know, I, I was actually shocked when I started working and talking to military spouses and I started talking about, sounds like secondary PTS. I always say, listen, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a doctor, but I'm here to hear your story. I've heard hundreds like it. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at or talked to somebody about secondary PTS? And every single time almost every single time. I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I could get PTS from him. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that this was even a thing. In fact, I just had another long term. I mean, her husband served 32 years, very, very high ranking person. And so I thought, you know, she did FRG, all of these other family readiness groups, very, very active. And I was talking to her her and her husband right at the edge of, you know, I, I can't do this. I've already almost divorced him three times. I love mm -hmm. him, but how much more can I take? Mm -hmm. You know, talking about issues her daughter was having. And I said, well, have you talked to somebody about secondary PTS for your daughter? And she was like, can they get it too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So there to me is a shocking lack of mm -hmm. awareness around it. Um, and, and women don't know what to look for, right? Yeah. So they, they don't understand that like the depression they're feeling is a sign of secondary PTS or anxiety or drinking or um, not sleeping well at night or isolating yourself from family and friends. All of these things are warning signs that we look for in our husbands, but then yes. we don't turn the mirror on ourselves and say, yeah, I, I have those symptoms too. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was diagnosed, I had no clue that symptoms were I was depressed. I was anxious, really bad anxiety, insomnia, like no other. Like I had no clue that those were all, yeah, a, a PTSD. It just blew my mind how uneducated I was, which means uh, there's probably a lot of people that have no clue that, th that this is what's actually going on with them. So they're getting diagnosed with, you know, something else. So yeah, that's huge. That's a, that's a, yeah, I hear you on that. I remember um, a doctor once telling me that my son had OCD. And I thought, okay, but you know, what is this? And um, and and we went, we went to go see somebody. The whole family did, and and I went in, and he said, yeah, yeah, you know, your, your son has a bit of this, and your husband has is the ADD, you know, attention deficit. He definitely has it. My son has it a bit, um, and the other daughter didn't, and the other one had the OCD. And he said, you have OL, and I go, oh God, what's that? <laughs> you know, he said, overload. Mm. Overload. You are balancing all of these people going through what they're going through, trying to navigate it, and you're overloaded, and that's caused enough stress on you in doing that. And we forget you're most certainly overloaded, Nicole. You know, six kids on your own constantly moving. That is overload, which then is going to trigger everything else. Right? So yeah. it's is it the system that's wrong? Should we be sending our soldiers 
over for such a long period of time? Should the times be shorter? Should they have a longer time at home so they can have a quality of family time? Should there be more support when they come home? Should there be more support for the wives? Is this conversation even happening? Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> 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 Good. Well, is the is the conversation happening? Are you not on the higher level? Well, I because, think you know. in our head that we have to be so strong. So we are not taking care of ourselves. We right. are not. You know, it's it's interesting because I was talking to some of my clients the other day. We invest so much in planning a date night, planning a yeah. play date for our kids, doing all this stuff. What are we doing for ourselves? Yes. And, it, and especially as a military spouse, you're definitely not doing anything for yourself because you're even putting your husband's career before you, not just the children, everything. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's, it's tough. That is just a tough life to live. And I want military spouses to know that we're all here for each other. We all want to be here for each other. And it's so important. If you need me to take your kids so you can go take a bath, whatever. <laughs> yes. I will do that Never mind you. a spa day. A bath right. day no, would be nice, yeah. right? Yeah. Just go to the restroom by yourself. Yes. <laughs> it would be lovely. Let me help you do that. Yes. Yes. Um, I think one of the things that we don't realize is even as a parent, we're going through things like, you know, we say to people, you know, shut the door, have somebody look after the kids and just go and have that nice bath with music and things like this. Go for a walk on your own, go and do something. Your own. It is essential to your well-beingness that you have time to nurture yourself. They all oxygenate yourself. If you're gasping for breath, how can you breathe breath in anyone else? And, um, you know, on the military side of it, you are on your own. I mean, you know, we've got an awful lot of mums out there that have been abandoned by their husbands mm -hmm. and they're left to, you know, they've got one job, two jobs, raising the kids on their own. We hear it all the time. And it's like, oh, yes, they're so brave. They're so courageous. So that where is the hell is the support for them? <laughs> well, you hear it a lot, but you don't see it. Like no. why are people not doing stuff? They know it. People know this. They know that the military spouse is tough. But why are they not just dropping a meal on their doorstep or just, yeah. you know, just something? It doesn't have to be a huge thing. Something so small. Sending a card, you know, sending a little text, thinking about you. Do you need anything? Means the world to us. Yeah. It's the world. Yeah. It just somebody sometimes, as I said, just to hear the W H I N E, the wine. You know, you know, it's a, let them have a wine. Let them get it off their chest. Let them complain. Don't tell them to suck it up. They have every right to go, oh my God, <coughs> this is so awful. And do you know what he did and what she did? Oh my God, I'm at my limit. Let them have the bitch fest. I bet Jen can can hear what I'm saying on this. Even my friends like, my husband's out a week, out of work. I was traveling with work for a week or they're gone for the week. And I'm like, that yeah. must be nice. But they're like struggling. They're like, oh, what am I going to do for two days? What am I going to do for five days? Like, my husband's got a year. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's difficult too. And, and really, you know, that, I saw it all the time, right? Um, especially when I was working alongside was mm. you hear the language all the time, well, civilians or civs, and you know, there's there's a language for people outside of service. But what that does is it creates a divide. Yes. Us versus them. Yes. And, and the I lack have to of understanding. Sometimes, yeah, these you know, I'm like, hey, your wife and your kids are civilians too, right? Mm. You have to you can't divide all the time. And I think military spouses even to a degree with civilian community and military community, that's very different too. Because like you said, Nicole, it's, you know, I've had girlfriends call and say things and I'm like, I wish that was my problem. Like I wish this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. went in my house, you know, like, can you believe my husband was such an asshole and he did this? I'm like, that's like before noon in my <laughs> <laughs> it's harder. I know when you talk about spouses again, you know, I was flying out to um, Sedona a couple of months ago and they say, okay, military, you can board first. I went up there and the guy's like, you're not military. I have an ID right here, but you're not the active duty person. I'm like, what do you think I do? Yes. I, yes. Yeah. I am active duty. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so frustrating. Yes. It, yeah. I, and this is the thing about the division, isn't it? Is that, um, this is what I said earlier about veterans who come back, who are suffering from post-traumatic stress, feeling the lack of support. Um, as you said, so many suicides because they feel all alone and other veterans, you know, forming foundations and forming organizations to help them because they understand what they're going through. 
uh, you know, my argument is this, okay, government, we, if you can't do it yourself, put the funding behind the people that are doing it, mm -hmm. right? Give them more resources, give them more money, give them more help because, all right, they're there to help the others. But we don't realize, you know, so many of these people, um, they leave the military, they become civilian. But that military mindset, that military post-traumatic stress is with them in everything that they do. And it's, I, I just, one thing I did, pet peeve, is the throwaway society. You know, throw away of anything, you know, the, the, the waste that we throw away, not only with our food, with everything else, but with people. And, you know, people are not the throwaway society that you, oh, they're no use anymore. You know, they're a drag addict on the corner anymore. They couldn't cover, they couldn't cut it. You know, we're not going to care about them. Uh, excuse me? Yeah. They're flesh and blood. They have a heart and soul. Yeah. They and fought I'm for you. Where is your compassion and consideration to help them now? And it just blows my mind. It really does. I've noticed a lot with civilians too. Like I can get all the support I want or need while my husband's deployed, but the moment he's been back for two weeks, where the heck do those people go? You right. know, I don't think people realize we live this life day to day, to yes. day to day. It's not just when my husband's deployed and I need just as much care when he's here than when he's away too. You know? Yes. Probably well, he's more. got to download when he comes back. He's got to kind of reset and get back into that groove, right? It's not like, oh, I'm home. Where's the garbage? <laughs> you know? I think people don't realize that, it, okay, if they're not deployed for our family, when's the next time he's going to be deployed? That's always a yeah. part of our life. It's not just, okay, he's back now. Yeah, but how long is he back for? That's the life we live, you know? It's not just well, that, that's why I'm saying I think there should be a restructure, yeah. you know, not so long away. You know, a fireman will work so many days and hours on and then so many days off. And they know they need those days off to just to decompress to, 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 you know, first couple of days is just that. And then the couple of days of being actually being able to be there with the family. Uh, we need to see this, I think, in, you know, in the military world. I understand if there is a war, which seems to me they always like to create a war somewhere, you know, it might be different. But I think it should be limited amount of time especially for a family person and then give them that time uh, equal amount of time at home because if we don't invest in their families not only do we see multiple divorces but we see so many broken children and broken people that now becomes really kind of too big to put the pieces back together again yeah and you know i will tell you we had some meetings out at fort bragg um, a few weeks ago, and basically what we were told by the highest higher ups was to stay out of the system, to stay out of it. It's broken. Mm -hmm. It takes too long for this ship to turn. So while we're trying to steer the ship towards helping our people, you have to deal with big military Ugh. laws, you know, regulations, everything that goes into it. While Tom and I would love to say, like, we've got the answer. Let's go. They're like, okay, and we'll do a study, and we'll then we'll do research. And then, you know, I told Tom, I said, the meetings about the meetings for the meetings of the meetings are killing me, you know. And so, really, they're like, listen, you guys have something very important that our service members need, which is they can come to you and be anonymous, right? Yeah. They're, they're, it's not going to higher command. It's not going up the chain. We'd love to be able to tell our people, hey, raise your hand for help. But there are going to be implications yes. that – are are going to follow not because the command wants it but because big army or big navy or marines or air force are going to have you check those boxes mm -hmm. and even command doesn't want to check those boxes they still have to mm -hmm. and so what's really important and for anyone listening who is wanting help wants to raise their hand for help and is afraid or doesn't want to go to command there are resources outside of the system there are many of them and you can get the help you need outside of the system. And I think that's really important. Yeah. I have one of the major roadblocks over the last two years, we've heard from service members is, hey, um, I don't wanna go. I don't wanna go to command. Yeah. I don't wanna raise my hand for help. I don't want the other guys to look at me this way or that way. And the stigma's there. And you know, we do the best we can to break that stigma. This is a generational thing. It's yes. gonna take time. You know, we're the first on the dance floor, hopefully, you know, in 20 years, it's completely overrun. But right now, there's still stigma. There's still 
a lot of issues with it, but there are so many fantastic and amazing resources outside that are waiting mm-hmm. and ready and free yeah. and will welcome you with their arms and keep it quiet. So I just I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I think about my husband and I had a recent talk and you know when people need help but they're so scared to ask, mm-hmm. especially the military because they're always being watched. They're always yes. they have all these rules. Your hair has to look like this, your mm-hmm. uniform has to look like this, you know, and they're so scared to ask for help because who's going to be watching them? What are they mm-hmm. going to think? What's going to happen to their next, you know, their next step up? What are their rank is going to be? So I love that. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, you, you think about not just the military, but you look at the police force, mm-hmm. you know, um, um, you know, did, did that affect you? Oh, no, no, I'm fine. And they're shivering and shaking inside because they, they, you know, if they admit that it shook them up, then, you know, maybe they'll be put on desk duty or have to leave the place altogether. And the thing is having a neutral ground, you know, it is not a weakness to say, I am going through this. It is actually a strength to admit it and have somebody listen and somebody care and somebody help them through that will make them stronger. Everybody needs a decompress. Everybody needs something where they can just let it all out. Are they keeping it in? This is why we see so much violence from the police. It's been kept in and kept in and kept in and then suddenly snaps, bang, bang, bang. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Now you don't want soldiers on the front that have got like that, mm-hmm. right? Because they're not discerning anymore. They're just releasing. So why, if they can have a safe place to go to release, to collect themselves, to have that support, they're going to be better soldiers, better police, better human beings. So yes, it, it is back to what I'm saying, invest in our children, invest in the problem. Mm-hmm. There's always a solution, but everybody's looking for it elsewhere. And I said, you know, it kind of reminded me of that movie, Brazil. You need a requisition for a requisition for a requisition, right? right. And let, let's get bureaucracy out of it. And I have a word every year that I go with, and this year it's actionism. Mm-hmm. We want to see actionism. Put your, you want to see a study on it? Put the money behind this program and we'll show you the results. There's your study. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> and for children too, like a children, we, it's okay to like take your child to the doctor and get counseling and if they, you know, whatever it is, I want, you know, spouses to see that it's okay. We yeah. need help. We live a hard life and you have to constantly be watching your children too, because they don't have the verbiage to constantly say, no. mommy, I need this. Mommy, this is hurting. Mommy, I don't, you know, they're babies. Or even as they're getting bigger, heck, I didn't learn until I was almost 40 years old that, you know, this is what it's just, I want parents to think, no spouses that their children are being affected and that it's okay to get help for them. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the word stigma. Um, I, I interviewed a guy who had been a highly successful businessman, but along with it came the heroin and cocaine, kind of just the recreational stuff they were doing. And it ended up with him kind of being in jail and talking to a guy there that was completely down and night out. And he was ready to hear the wisdom from this guy. And what this guy said to him changed his world completely. He completely dropped the habit. He still made money because he was good doing that, but he started um, two things. One, an anti-stigma. So for people who are drug addicts, no stigmatization against them getting a job or being embraced in society instead of support. And he also started a foundation foundation for children of parents, uh, of drug addict parents that get left behind. Had he not gone through that, he wouldn't have founded these things so we've got to realize all those beautiful organization organizations out there like both of yours jen and, and tom's they came about because you saw a need mm-hmm. right you know what people need and so therefore you know how to give it to them and really all it is is that support and you know of course right now it's the public support the donations and everything that can go in. And maybe this is a way that people can actually honor our veterans is that let's support the organizations that are supporting the spouses and the soldiers to have beautiful lives. We don't want them to have a living death, right? We don't want them to die for us. We don't want them to commit suicide for us. We, we don't want them to come back and have a living death where they just can't cope with life and the stress of it is too much and that everything falls apart. 
we want them to come back and have a beautiful abundant life with all the gifts and tools and skills they've learned that they can contribute to society so i think we need the voices out there to say no more forget about your bureaucracy put the money and the time behind the organizations that are making a difference support the wives because where would the where would our soldiers be if they didn't have a wife to come home to if they didn't have somebody there looking after the children right so the big word here is goddamn support folks <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, you know, I think you brought up a good point, too, that a lot of people ask, how can I help? And, mm -hmm. and we're asked every day, how can I help? How can I give back? And, you know, for people like Nicole said, just simple acts of kindness. There's no yeah. such thing as a small act of kindness. Yeah. They're all big to the person receiving them. You know, I mean, gosh, buying somebody who's looking like they're having a really crappy day, grabbing their meal, you know, mm -hmm. at McDonald's and the, when they're in the line behind them, just saying, I got you, you know, yeah. sometimes it's the smallest little thing just to let, you know, somebody know that they're being seen is huge. And, you know, the support, there are so many nonprofits that are doing yeah. amazing work. I mean, literally I come across them every week and I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, I didn't know about that one. You know, yeah. wow. Patriot of the Falling Children. We've just spent a weekend with them two weekends ago. What remarkable college students who have all lost a parent overseas. And, and really the way this organization's lifting up these children and helping mm -hmm. them is phenomenal. It, just do a little research. Just do a little Google. Go and check out, you know, their ranking and make sure they're, you know, legit and good and they're spending their money where they need to spend it and then support it. That's how yeah. you could do it. Or Heck, if you're an accountant, call one of these places and say, do you need financial help? Um, mm -hmm. I could do books for you. Or, hey, I'm in marketing. Do you guys need mm -hmm. some help with this? There's a million ways you could give back. Yeah, and I really want spouses to know that they're not alone. I talk yeah. very often about, you know, because I lost my son and I've experienced, I was Melissa's little girl, I was raped in college. And, you know, you, you're not alone, you're not alone. But I want military spouses to hear that too. I want them to hear that they are not alone. There's mm -hmm. millions of us all over the country, all over the world. And they, they have that support out there. And it, it, it is there, it is mm. there. If they just reach out and ask for it, it's, it's huge. It's, support is huge. You know, you'll see when it comes to the kids, um, I think there should be some education of um, military moms and dads going in and doing a talk in the school and saying, do you know how hard it is for our kids constantly be moving around? Please don't look at them as something temporary that you don't want to get involved with. Please understand it's hard maybe them for to make friends because they know that they're going to be moving on. You know, please understand that they're dealing with the post-traumatic stress from their dad uh, um, and, you know, from the mum playing all the roles and getting stressed out about it and you know the thing is when you educate people as to what other people are going through and you're asking them to be compassionate they will generally step up mm -hmm. but half the time they're just ignorant mm -hmm. they just simply don't know and so by you know this show you know please share the show along with the civilians because somewhere along the line, you know, a military a wife out there, right? And you have a better understanding of what they're going through, how to reach out to them. Simply go up to them and say, okay, I, what do you want? I'm here to help, mm -hmm. right? And for, this, and for the, the military wife to say, okay, I've got a pile of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> mean it when you ask and, yeah, and be ready to accept the need all right yeah, it could be yeah. as mundane as getting oh, yeah. the laundry I done right? to me recently and, I, and they said we'll do it i'll do anything you need i'll do anything you're i was like really because if you ask me that i'm going to give you a lot of stuff yes my kids for a full day <laughs> and i need the groceries i need this you know yeah. and it's yeah, if you're going to ask me that, I'm going to really be honest with you. I need yeah. a lot. <laughs> you know, especially right now during COVID times, yeah. you know, because, you know, maybe the kids aren't at school. You've got to be more mindful of who they play with. You've got to stick in your bubble, right? All of this. So on top of everything else, there's the pandemic lifestyle that we're all navigating as well, which can isolate you even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pandemic is what made me really start reaching out with my husband gone with Jeff gone. I was, I needed help. Like I couldn't, I couldn't keep doing this on my own. You know, you're watching the news. Remember the beginning of it where we didn't know what in the world was going on. The kids are all of a sudden home for months, you know, and it's just, I, I need some help. And that's when I finally reached out and I was like, 
why the heck did I wait so long to do yeah. this? You know? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not easy. And, I, you know, I, I'm so glad that you're sharing your story that because it's like that first step that's so hard. And then once you break that barrier of like, I can't, I can't. And that was my story. Like, I can't reach out. I don't know. And it was um, going to one of the unit formals with Tom. And literally, he's like, um, so it's guy night only. Um, you know, here's the wives they're going over here. I didn't know anybody. Like, mm no one, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, another wife who knew no one, um, she was like, oh, do you want to walk down to the bar with me? And we ended up sitting there talking and both trying not to cry because I'm like, you too, you too, you too. Yes, yeah. Me. Yeah. And it was like, why have I waited so long yeah. to open up yeah. and share with someone? Because after I did, it was like the weight just yes. lifted. You could see it in her and me. And we're both like, you know, yeah. like, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. And you know, it's just that first step of and like, I bet you knew in that moment you were not alone. You knew you yes. were not alone, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful yes. thing. Nobody should be alone. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you're doing. Nobody should have to go through any struggle alone. We are, are walking our own path. It's our own self-discovery. Um, the struggles that we go through, we're going to discover our abilities, our courage, our strength. Uh, very often our meaningful purpose, our calling, you know, look what your calling has become, Jen, you know, it's certainly not one that you thought it would be, but look how passionate you are about it now. And if we allow to ourselves to take that path, but along the way, people are always there to fill your backpack, you know, of knowledge, wisdom, skills, tools, share the journey with you. You still got to walk it, but you can still have companionship along the way in walking it, support along the way, because as human beings, we are there to support, uplift, care, and, and just embrace each other. And, you know, it's not only just being there to, to care for you or care for each other, it's also to celebrate each other, mm -hmm. to celebrate what you're going through, to celebrate, you know, those, you know, like when husband comes home, give him a couple of days to download, and then I'm taking your kids, off you go and have a romantic evening. And maybe you want a romantic evening at home. Without kids, who wants my six kids for a sleepover? <laughs> right? I will say the best advice I was given is every time he returns from a deployment, take that next weekend and go be just you and your husband, just have yes. a weekend, just a short weekend away. And that, that was beautiful advice because it's helped our marriage tremendously. Well, that's, that's one of the programs that you do, Jen, isn't it? The husband and wives on a retreat. You know, just kind of getting to know each other again, like, because very often it must be like, uh, 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 I'm married to you. <laughs> when, when did, oh, that was a year ago, right? <laughs> you look yeah. like what? You're what? <laughs> I love that suggestion too, and and in fact, even with Tom, it's it's knowing your partnership and mm. and, and really putting that to a very high level of like, okay. I understand your career is here, but our relationship needs to be here too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's very difficult to do in the military life. And, yeah. and even to the point when Tom was contracting, he was still going overseas. When he came back one trip from Saudi Arabia, I seriously was like, okay, we have to have a plan in place for when you leave and when you come home. Mm -hmm. Like, let's have a plan. Mm -hmm. Because it was like a week before he would go, he was already gone. He was yes. already over, yes. he was already, you know, and I was taking it personal, like, mm. you're going to be gone for six weeks, don't you want to hang out, or, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on, and can you, you know, in his mind, he's like, I've got to get everything in the house done before I leave, I have, you know, he's going already, do I have my guys set up, do I have, you know, so we knew, okay, a week before, like, just treat him like he's gone, he's just going <laughs> to crash out, but when he got home, literally, the offer always stood, if you need to go to a hotel, for a night or two when you get back mm -hmm. before you come into the home yeah because he would come back angry tired mm. just in a very bad headspace yeah and it's hard not to take that personally too you exactly. know like i can see you and don't long. you love me enough and you know you should go home or envelop yeah. me and you know all of that and it's like yeah know, it's not brilliant i never really thought about that I, that's brilliant jen because that that is all of a sudden they're back and they have these six kids that ah, daddy, daddy, daddy. Yes. Like, I'm like, take them. They're yours. <laughs> yeah. you imagine coming back after a you know, war or battle or, you know, a deployment. Like, oh. no, I can't, <laughs> you know, I lived it, but you, you lived something else while you were gone. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of families have like adopted that too. It's been pretty cool to see the yeah. results of yeah. 
how each relationship finds that story of coming home together and then leaving and having that plan in place. Yes. I think the plan is brilliant because if you think about it, that they're used to being a group, um, yeah. you know, high alert or whatever, um, come back 48 hours on their own, nobody else around them, decompress, sleep, shower, bath, watch TV, whatever it is, just, and then like, ah, oh, that's their deep breath. When they go home, they can be present. Mm -hmm. be yep. yep, Tom's only actually done it once. It's just that the offer's there. I think yeah. that helps him too. Like if I get off the plane and I'm not ready to go home to Jen and kids and three dogs and everything else, I have the option of going down to the Hampton Inn, mm -hmm. watching Naked and Afraid for 12 hours, mm -hmm. you know, in bed with snacks surrounding me and nobody's going to say anything to me. Right. And I don't have to talk to anyone look at anyone. And then when I come back in the door, I'm ready for them. But, you know, I think just even having that. Yeah. Choice. The, yes. Yeah. Yes. Like I can settle down after overseas mm -hmm. versus right back to you. And I do think as a military spouse, we need to know that, you know, we yes. need to know that that is something that we do is we are the wife, we are their wife, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, Yep. Yeah, we need to know that they need to come and not take it like you were saying, like, why are you doing this to me? Don't you love me? Don't yeah. watch <laughs> me with me. We haven't been together, you know, however long. Yeah. But yes, it, we do need to recognize that as a military spouse. And like, again, you know, he needs to understand mm -hmm. that you've been on your own battlefront for however long, mm -hmm. managing everything, no weekends off, mm -hmm. right? No downtime. You're just 24 seven. That equally, when coming back, it's now time to release you mm -hmm. and give you time and understand you're still in that high mode and there has to be some time for you to get you know darling shut the door bathroom door I've got the kids it's it's yours if you want to go out and see a friend off you go right if you need some time for yourself go and do it that has to be there too I think it takes a hot minute for the spouse when he comes back to realize that we've done it all on our own. Yeah. The children eat at this time, they go to school at this time, they do this at this time. You know, these are the days we do this, these are the day, how I take out the trash, because they're used, usually when they're home, they're helping with the dishes, they're helping with the trash. Yeah. We've done it all. Some of our biggest fights, Jeff's, my husband comes in and is like, we need to do it this way. Are you kidding me? I've got <laughs> we talked about that, don't we? All alive. The children yeah. are all alive. I think we'll be okay, you know? Yes. Yeah. Well, we, we talked about this when we did the show with Jen and Tom, and he would come home and his military thing is, you know, it's <laughs> got to be done this yeah. way. And you're saying, we've done just fine without you. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you're disrupting yes. the cycle that was running just fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can keep that for when you're back out there, over here, you like, know. Hotel. Remember that hotel? You guys I'm, right I'm the colonel here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Which I would also like to say, I think the, like you had said, the offer is flipped. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. And if the spouse needs that time, in fact, I, I just kind of got on a guy the other day because I said, um, hey, you know, we're working with the spouse and, and she needs a little bit of a break. And he said, I guess I could babysit. And Tom's like, hey, they're your kids. It's not <laughs> babysitting when they're your exactly. kids. Exactly. It's called parenting, buddy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we've got to realize we're going back to the children. They haven't seen dad in a while. He comes in through the door. He's probably even changed again because of what he's gone through. Uh, don't come in and start stretching your stuff, mm -hmm. right? Every time you come back, you have got to build another relationship with your children because they've grown in their own world. And, and you know, a year of deployment, that is like a six year span in a child, sure, you know, I mean, look how much they grow in a year, not just physically, emotionally, in every other way, you're going to come back expecting your kid to be this, and you're going to discover they're that. Mm -hmm. So you've got to take the time and respect to know who they are now and meet them on that level. Right? You've got to, so, learn, again. You've got to learn who they are again. Yes. On all fronts. Yeah. Children, life, spouse, all of us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's work to be done in coming home. Right? So it's, this is the life you've chosen. Uh, these are the this is the price that everybody's paying but it you don't want it to cost um a, you know a divorce or a children feeling completely disconnected and god forbid suicide we don't want that so you know this is the time when you know especially the military guy comes back and i don't need help well i do and we're going to reach out to this organization there was one guy who was a, a military he, he kept going back 
He said the adrenaline of being on the front constantly, your life every second. When he came back, he found life too slow until somebody introduced him to yoga. Yeah. And it was yoga that changed his life. And now he has an entire program for um, the, the military and their wives, the whole family going to yoga together. Love it. Because in doing that together, they're all then forming themselves on that same space and time. And it helps them open up and communicate again, which I think is absolutely fabulous. Because it's already, well, he does this and you do that. It's about how do you come back together? But if you think about it too, he's mostly over there with males. Mostly, there's females yeah. too, but mostly males. He's coming back to like, we're emotional. Women, we just, we're emotional. We got lots of feelings going on. They're not used to that. They're like, duh, duh, duh. that's what they yes. do all the time. We're like, <laughs> No, yeah, that's a whole new thing too. Yeah, yeah. Stop being so neurotic. Shut up. <laughs> it goes back to I did this without you, yes. for you. So yeah, yes. and all the children are alive. So we're yes, good. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to learn. You know, we've learned a lot here today, you know, from the two of you, because you're both coming at it from different perspectives as well. And so, you know, that kind of gives a much rounder picture. We need to have more respect for our the spouses, the wives, you know, in some cases, it's the, it's the woman that's over there and the husband that's left behind or, or same sex, who cares? It's the whatever spouse. Yep. And the whole point is support, being there for one another. And I think campaigning when you find a group, a foundation, an organization that's doing it right, campaigning with your local MPs and senators and everything else and saying, this program's working. Let's get some funding. Let's get some support back. You know, no Brazil requisition, requisition, we're going to study it. Study it in action right now and see the effects that it's having. We, it's only when we speak up that we, we create change. So speak up, speak up, speak up on behalf of our military wives and military wives speak up on what you need, right? When your husbands are deployed, they want to know the wives are okay, that they're supported, that somebody's got their back. Because the whole thing about being on the front there is that somebody's got their back. Mm -hmm. Who's got the wives' backs? The family's backs, mm -hmm. right? So you guys have got to shout out. You've got to say this organization is working, that organization is working. Help us, support yeah. it so it can reach more people. And fellow military spouses, I, I urge you, because once you do, you'll see that you're not alone. I know right. I said that before, but it's a huge thing. You are not alone in the moment. Sorry, you can hear one of the planes yes. over here right now. <laughs> I'm <military> too. <laughs> um, but yes, the moment that you do get out there and you speak, and that's why I love talking about this, because I want fellow military spouses to know that we're not alone. There's a lot of us out here, and we want to help. We yeah. need the support, and the support is there. Now, you've both got books. Right. So I want to hear all about the books and how people can get hold of them, about the organizations that you're representing, um, you know, about the support that you're doing. How do people reach you, get hold of you? What are the books? What are the organizations? Blah, 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 blah. Nicole. So my book has not come out yet. My business is Spiritual Lighthouse Healing and Guidance. And I use, um, I'm a Holy Fire 3 Corona 2 Reiki master as well. So I love working with my clients, breathing life back into them, encouraging them, teaching them that, you know, we're, we're all in this together and how to love themselves again. So the book will be coming out in a few months. So I'll talk about that when I, when I get Good. closer. <laughs> Good. I give you a site again spirituallighthousehealing.com by the way six kids on her own and runs a business <laughs> take that in folks okay jen show us your book you have a new book right out so this is uh, arsenal of hope and it's tactics for taking on pts they made me put the d on it uh together although my organization's call calls it post-traumatic stress injury um ptsi or pts um, and this book was really written for me seven years ago. Like, what do I wish I would have known? Mm. What do I wish I could have understood better? And really just wanted to help spouses who felt like I did, alone, isolated, depressed, anxious. Mm. Um, no, like Nicole said, you're not alone. There's millions of us in this uh, tribe and hopefully what this can do is provide some stories and then practical tips and tools. It's, it was really important to me. So my husband, Tom, has a book, All Secure, and 
his book was about his time overseas and, and the PTS and how it developed in him, how he overcame it. And I read his book and I love it, but I'm like, I'm a tools girl. Like I'm a self-help, like yeah. all my shelf is all self-help and Reiki and totally fire and yes. And so I'm like, okay, but I, what do I do with it? So I yeah, wanted my yeah. book to be a, what do I do with it? And so there's practical tips and tools and kind of to help start the journey because it's a journey, mm-hmm. but it's hopefully. Where do they get the book? Um, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, they can get it on our website, allsecurefoundation.org. Excellent. And the foundation, both of them? It's uh, allsecurefoundation.org. So All Secure, we help um, special operation families primarily, but we really help everyone. So um, really what we do is is twofold. We do counseling or coaching, and that's not done by Tom and I. That's done by a licensed clinical social worker, Stacy Stone, who is phenomenal. We call her the unicorn of healing. So um, she really is phenomenal. I talk a lot about her in my book. Um, but what we do is help families and primarily couples right now reconnect um, and to work through the trauma of PTS. Um, there is a way to the other side of it, and it's confusing and it's long for many. So we're trying to help through awareness and education about what might be coming down the road or if you're facing it, how to get to the other side of it. And your, your um, other one? Your other foundation? It's called Virago. Hang on, we had a wobbly uh, so there. Virago Say that again, Liz. female warrior. Say that again oh, because we had a wobbly. Sorry. Uh, Vir- oh, sure. Uh, Virago is a platform. Right now it's a social media platform. We're going to expand it into seminars and workshops. I've brought on some amazing military and veteran spouses to help me run that now. Um, and they're bringing fantastic ideas, just like Nicole said. I mean, it's just the most amazing network of incredible women with a diverse background and um, starting that conversation, helping us not feel so alone, asking tough questions and getting answers from a multiple different points of view all around the world. And so Virago can be found at allsecurefoundation.org. It will have its own little sister site here soon. Um, but you can find us on social media as well. Excellent. And there was a reason I put you two together. <laughs> yeah, Nicole's great. Got on. Got on. Other than the show. <laughs> Um, you know, that's the thing I said, you know, six kids on our own and running a business, you know. Uh, so um, the thing is, yes, we can do it all. But we've also got to know when we need help, when we need support, and when we can say, you know what, not today. Mm-hmm. Right? Not today. And, you know, with what you're doing, Jen, with all the the support and the organizations and the people coming together, you two are making a difference, not just with this show, but you're making a difference in the lives of others, in that support of letting people know, most importantly, they're not alone, that people care for them, that there are solutions, and that this is a safe place, as you said, all secure, right? This is a secure place for all to feel that they can come to without judgment, without stigma, without apology, right? Being their beautiful, vulnerable selves, which will make them better human beings and who understand the strength and the courage and everything else that they can learn from it. So both of you ladies, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for who you are. Thank you. Thank you for having us on so we can meet and talk and hopefully inspire other spouses to share their stories. Right. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having us. It's such a beautiful thing to be able to talk about the military life that we live and to help fellow spouses and civilians. Yes. Um, and I also have your organization under our, our mentors page as well on all of the sites because of what you're representing. And, uh, you know, that we've done shows. I've done shows with Nicole, show with, Jen, show with Jen and Tom. Please go back and listen because although we've talked about a great deal today, there's even more to learn. And if you, you know, don't just clap your hands and say, oh, thank you for your service. Understand what they need now, because it's now time for you to be of service to them and their families. It's not just them making the sacrifices, it's the families that are making the sacrifice. So this is a community that you need to get behind. And hopefully we'll get to a stage in life where there will be no more wars for anyone to go off and fight to. But military will become a different form of support in a different way. That's my my dream anyway. Um, and But right now, the help is needed now. Post-traumatic stress is serious. It affects on so many different layers. And 
helping each other, being the support of each other, understanding what they go through. And you know, there's so many women out there going, you know, what they've talked about today, I'm not a military wife, but I understand I'm going through that myself. As you said, Jen, husbands who travel or husbands who've left the home and left them, you know, somebody holding the bag. It's time for us to look at each other as that village and step up and be there for each other. And this is the invitation, folks, please. So go and look into these organizations, go and look at the work that Nicole is doing and understand you are part of the solution. Yes, yes, Ignoring yes. it is part of the problem. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, folks. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.